Welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew and I'm Tiffany and we are the Kellys and you're watching the Kellys Country Life. So today as you can see we're set up back in front of the pole barn house and this is going to be episode two for framing. So I explained in the last video that I was going to keep it short and not go over many details. When I got to editing that video <laughs> it was over 30 minutes long by the time I got done with it and I still had stuff that I cut out that I wanted to share. So I asked at the end of that video if you made it that far, and I'm asking now, what kind of videos would y'all like to see moving forward? Do you just want me to jump straight into building, or do you like for me to go over the details? A lot of people have requested that, but I'm always open ears and willing to listen to what y'all would like to watch. Sadly, if I'm gonna go over a lot of details and plans and things as I go along, that eats up a lot of time, and these videos will get longer. So again, I would love to hear if you like the longer videos, more details involved, or if you just want me to jump straight into building as we move forward with this house. There is a lot to cover over the next many, many months here. So I would like to make the content that y'all wanna watch. So speaking of that, being that I haven't heard from you just yet, we're gonna go over some detailed stuff today because I promised that in the last video. I'm gonna show you all some things in the plans, how I went out and purchased some of the things I need, how I read some of the stuff in the plans. Because again, a lot of y'all have reached out to me and you are building pole barn houses or getting very close to. So maybe some of this stuff will be helpful to you. So let's get started. All right, it is extremely bright and I'm about to show you white paper. So hopefully the camera picks this up and doesn't blind you. Where do we begin? Not on that one. Yeah, this is the one I want to show y'all right here. This is our set of house plans. All right, so if y'all watched the last episode where I raised this wall right here, I explained at the beginning of it, I had the hardest time in the world finding some of the most basic things that the plans required to build this house. So I'm going to go over some of that right now. Okay, so here is our set of plans. It's kind of just a, a basic layout of how we want the wall set up. I'm not gonna go through every bit of this, but I'm gonna show you some of the things I read and why I purchased some of the things that I did. So for example, if you look at the base plate of the house, of all the walls, it's requiring water half inch tighten bolts. And it says at the corners and 36 inches on center. So every 36 inches, it wants a tighten bolt. And as you've seen in the last episode, we put some of those down. So this is a Titan anchor. These are designed to go down and bite into the concrete. They're very highly rated, work very well. They also require a base plate washer or commonly just called a plate washer to spread that load out once it goes through that base plate. That way the washer or the uh, bolt itself, the bolt head can't pull through that wood should there ever be such crazy uplift. So that's some of the stuff that I had to go try to find. You see it gives the layouts of the studs, 16 inches on center. We covered that in the last episode on how we built the wall. Uh, some other stuff that I kind of had to go after to try to find as far as OSB that it calls for, uh, the nails, how you nail it, etc. Also on the nails, as you can see in some spots, it calls for 8D nails. I believe that's a two and a half inch nail if I remember correctly, quite common for sheathing. We'll get into those a little bit later. And then you'll see in some of the other ones, it calls for 16D nails, uh, which is, a, you can see them in the three and a quarter or three and a half inch nail, but most common uh, is a 16 penny nail is a three and a half inch nail. And that's for some of the plates that we have to tie together. Also, what I struggled with was all window and door headers uh, to jack studs. We're gonna build one of those today. I'm gonna show you, require these sp uh, straps right here. So this is a light duty, that's what the L stands for, strap. So LSTA 21 means 21 inches. That is this type of strap right here. However, I could not find those. This is a M, so MSTA, medium duty, and it's 24 inches. So this is much heavier duty than what the plans call for because I could not find these straps anywhere. I had to wind up paying about twice the money for the longer, thicker strap, but it is what it is at this point. Also, I talked about in the last episode how we had in the plan that we want to lag the walls or the uh, two by six studs into the six by six post. And it says use three inch lags, 24 inch on center. I went with a little bit bigger lag. It doesn't hurt, it didn't cost much more money. And that's what we wind up putting that two by six over there into the six by six with. Always want to throw a washer on that as well. 
So that was some of the basic stuff, the nails, the bolts, uh, the plate washers and straps. That's what I need to kind of carry along here. As we start getting into sheathing and other things, I'll come back to the plant and show y'all some of the stuff that's required here. But this, it was an absolute struggle just to find some of these most basic things right here. And the hardest thing to find was the framing nails for the nail gun. Now we just built this wall right here. It was the easiest one to start with right there. No headers, no nothing. So today we will be, uh, we will be building a header. We'll be doing some strapping and I'll show you how we'll put that together. So we'll have to read the measurements off the plan to get exact dead center of that window. So as you can see, we have 11 foot, eight inches to this wall right here, plus another five foot eight. We'll add those two together to get dead center of that window right there. All right, so here's where things get a little interesting. If you watched the last episode, we can't just strictly lay timbers out 16 inches on center because we have six by six posts constantly breaking the wall up, throwing us off. We're not just making a long run of wall to work and just 16 inch on center, lay everything out and raise it up. Plus we've got to make sure, I decided we've got to make sure the sheathing lines up and butts up on a stud because I do not want to have to rip down a whole bunch of sheathing. So we've got to go do some measuring on the last wall before we can lay this wall out. All right, so if you watched the last episode, I stated that I really want to start my sheathing on the outside edge of this six by six post for a couple of reasons, but the most critical is I want the sheathing to act as a hurricane strap to the wall as well. It's already bolted and nailed in, but I want to make it all one piece as much as I can. Sheathing will help do that. That way if these posts ever do rot or give me a problem, they're supported greatly by the interior walls as well as the sheathing locking everything together. So if I start the sheathing out here, but I start this wall 16 inch on center, it's not gonna match up. I have to do 16 inch on center from the outside edge of this post right here. So whenever that four foot sheathing stops, it stops on this stud right here. When the next four foot sheathing stops, it's on this stud right here and I can continue to go. Now that I'm about to build another wall down here, I need that sheathing to stop on the same stud at the uh, end of the other piece of sheathing and continue. So I have to figure out where four foot from the center of this stud will be to the center of a stud down here. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to avoid ripping a bunch of sheathing and sadly I can't build one long wall and perfectly line everything up and raise it. This is one of the aggravating parts about a pole barn house build. I have to do some odd measuring for these exterior walls. All right, so I know my sheathing's gonna stop on this stud because I marked that uh, whenever I built this wall in that last episode. So I'm going to hook on the outside edge of this and try to grab some quick measurements. All right, so I just made a mark on the concrete at 48 and three quarters inches because I want to find the center of that stud since I hooked on the outside edge and they're one and a half inches thick. Now I can come to the inside of this stud to that mark and I know I need a stud at 18 and a half inches on that other piece over there. So we know we'll have a stud right here at the end, always will. I'll come to my 18 and a half inch mark and I'll make sure that I have one right there ready to nail that sheathing into. Planning this ahead now is gonna save me a lot of headache later when it comes time to put that sheathing up and go. All right, so where that 18 and a half inch mark was I made, I went 16 inch on center from that mark all the way on down. That way, I know I can continue to carry my four foot wide sheathing and always head on that mark. Now you still have to comply with 16 inch on center code. So if there's anywhere in between, like right beside this 18 and a half inch that I need a stud, I'm gonna to have to double two up right here. Looks like this wall is only gonna require one extra piece of lumber, which is perfectly fine. I bought extra to do that. It'll make the wall stronger, comply with code, but I'm still putting the studs where I need them to not have to do all that ripping down of the sheathing. All right, just like in the last video, it's at this point that I'll take my big framing square, put on those lines and go ahead and transfer the lines to my top plate. That way, whenever I have bottom and top plate and go to nail my stud in, I know I'm putting them perfectly square with each other. 
Now, if we didn't have to put a window or door in this wall right here, we go ahead and start cutting our studs, putting them in there, raising the wall just like we did that last one. But while this bottom plate is down here and top plate, we have to go ahead and set up where our window jack studs, cripples, and a few other pieces have to go. Plus, we still have to build our window header. Now, according to the plans, the window dead center was at 16 feet, four inches. So I just measured that entire wall, post included, and then I'm gonna add that length plus what I need on this particular bottom plate to find all the way from this end down there to 16 feet, four inches, so we can start laying our window out. So before you cut your window opening, this is the best time to either already have your windows or know the rough opening size. I did go to Lowe's where I'm most likely gonna buy my windows and took some pictures the other day of several different types of windows, including the tag on the side that called for the rough opening. Now it's quite common that I'm reading the rough opening, you can add a half inch to either side to that, so up to an inch. So to give you a little bit of wiggle room and kind of level the window out in there, we are gonna add a little extra there because the windows do have a big enough lip around the outside that you can still nail them in with the rough opening being a little bigger than what's called for. So it just so happens the windows uh, that I looked up calls for a 36 by 48 rough opening. So really we can make that 37 by 49, 37 wide, 49 tall. So now we have to lay that out on our bottom plate. So I have found the dead center of the window. Right, my measurements down here for the opening that we want. So this is dead center. Again, the plans called for this to be 16 feet, four inches dead center of the window from the furthest corner of the wall. I measured all the way down, found that mark. All right, now we're gonna take the 37 wide opening that I'm looking for, split it in half. So that would be 18 and a half inches. I know that I can go that wide down here and make a mark down here. Because on the outsides of these marks, we are gonna actually have to put some support studs. I made a mark all the way from here over to here. Everything in between will technically be the cutout opening for our window. This will make more sense in a minute uh, whenever I put everything up. I know on the inside edge of that, we're going to support a window header and it's done with what's called a jack stud. So we will have a jack stud on this side supporting that header for the opening, as well as over here. Uh, there's different marks in the industry for this, but I just write a J, it's very simple. Now on the other side of that, we will have to do what's called a king stud. So I'll put a K for over there and make my marks as well. You always have to have an outside stud supporting a jack stud. So king stud, jack stud, then everything in between because we're now we're gonna have a cutout and window seal. These are gonna be called cripples. They're short studs that are gonna support the window seal. Uh, also, while we have the bottom plate down, I have to go ahead and drill out my holes for the base plate bolts. Now's the time to do that so you don't drill through this later uh, with a wood boring bit, hit concrete and damage your bit. And the plans call for these to be 36 inches on center. All right, now it's time to go carry my top and bottom plate inside and set them down. And it's critical that I take them off of the uh, saw horses and put them in there the same way they're laid out right now since I have such odd measurements and we're not just raising a full interior wall.
All right, so now it's time to make the window header. This is what's actually gonna support the wall above it since we're taking out an open section of studs here. So headers are critical, especially on load bearing walls. So on a two by four wall, you would normally do two two by material, inch and a half, inch and a half, and sandwich a piece of half inch ply or OSB in between to get three and a half inches. On a two by six, it's actually five and a half inches. So you'll take three pieces of two by material, in this case, two by sixes, and you'll actually have to sandwich some half inch material between both of them because as you can see, if this was the wall stud right there, we still have a huge gap to fill, about a one inch gap. So two half inch pieces of ply in between this lumber will get us the spacing and the header size that we need to sit on one of these two by six studs. Now I don't know the national code, it's for you to look up, but uh, I know in my area, if you go have a span over four feet, 11 inches, you have to go up to two by eight material. Anything smaller than that, you can use two by six for a header material. Uh, and we will have some windows in the house that will go up all the way up to two by 10 headers for the big window openings down on the balloon frame wall at the other end. It'd be quite a while before we get to that. But you'll see anywhere from four feet nine to four feet 11 inches, anything wider than that, step up in size to two by eight material for your header. So I've got my three pieces cut at 40 inches that I need for my header. Now I have to cut two pieces of this half inch ply to go in between them the same exact size. All right, now it's time to assemble our header. I don't even know if wood glue is required, but since we're already over building this, why not? All right, so these two studs that I just called or cut right here are called the header jacks. Basically, they kind of jack and hold up the header. I cut these at 81 inches because I want them to match up, want the top of the windows to match up with the tops of the doors. Uh, that way I can keep it consistent throughout the house. That's kind of industry standard to do that. So it catches your eyes. The top of all the windows, uh, top of the header jack should be about 81 inches. Cut these boards plus an inch and a half a bottom plate down there puts it about 82 and a half inches. Also while I was in Lowe's I took pictures of interior doors, exterior doors and took pictures of the side sticker that uh, called for the rough cut opening. All those were around 82 to 82 and a half inches. So I am trying to match my window openings, tops of the windows with the doors. It'll just look better to the eye as you look across the room. So there is our door header installed. We've got our jacks. We'll go ahead and start getting everything nailed in. And then we'll have to put some uh, more pieces up top that are called cripples, top and bottom, plus our window seal. All right, now that we have removed the wall stud supports here, that's what we built the header for. But we have got to put these small pieces called cripples in here to support this top plate from this header. If we were to put weight up here right now with nothing in between, it could cause this header to sag. So all we're doing is just reinforcing. Now, if I were thinking, I wouldn't have put this top plate on until I nailed down into these. So now I'm gonna have to kind of toenail everything. All right, so now I have cut my cripples that are going to support the window seal. And then there is our
our window seal. Now it's a good thing Tiffany was out here with me today because we changed our mind on the window size. In the plans we just stuck in long 30 by 50 inch rough opening windows and uh, we got to thinking in a bedroom we don't really want a long window like that. Those are more for living rooms but the other reason we don't want a long window that would have came down to here is if we decide to ever move the bed over to this window and have a big headboard uh, or this side of the room, excuse me, that window would be in the way. We're also going to put a window unit in this. I know, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. A window unit in a new house, trust me, we don't care anymore. When we finally put one in our last house and you can run the bedroom at 60 something degrees but still leave the rest of the house up at 80, there's no point in cooling down the rest of the house when you're sleeping in the bedroom all night. We like to make that much colder and it saved huge on our electricity bill. Plus, not to mention, Anytime we have to run the generator and we're, you know, out without power for days, say a hurricane or something, those generators can run a windy unit, but the ones that we have won't run a big central AC. So we can sleep at night with AC. It's extremely important to us to have that. So that got us thinking. If we had a big window down to here like was in plan and had a windy unit in it and we ever put the bed over toward that side, it would completely block it. So we decided to go with a 36 by 36 window, which is very common size right here. So I did my opening 37 by 37 to give me some leeway. So we did change that, and I think for good reason. All right, so the last thing to put in is these window sill. They're called cripples. So we'll put these in. They still keep us going with that 16 inch on center, which is critical because one of these is gonna be where my sheathing stops and I need to butt to it. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna try to raise this heavy thing and hopefully it fits. Get <laughs> better. No. Are right, you ready? Uh. Uh. Yeah, I After a little bit of trimming, got it to fit. I am definitely guilty of making things too tight. It was about an eighth inch too much on the top. All right, so Tiffany wants to try her hand at the old Dewalt impact. Yeah, just push real hard oh, okay. until you pull that one. Keep going. Keep going until that washer pulls in the wood a little more. All right, now you ain't doing good for the camera. You're blocking everything. Uh, we can't see what you're doing. Uh. Keep going. Just a little more. Okay. All right, so if the bedroom wall ever blows in, it's your fault. <laughs>
All right, so Tiffany's trying the old hammer drill. All right, now keep running it and pull it up. All the way out, so it'll clear itself. Yeah, easy, it's got power. I go all the way back down one more time. Okay. All right, that should do it. Well, the last thing left to do, according to plans, before we can call this wall officially framed, is to, it says to tie these headers with these straps to the jack studs. So all I can figure I'm gonna do is everywhere there's a nail hole, strap this header to this stud. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I forgot I bought this thing, thanks to one of y'all recommending it. It's gonna be a lifesaver for these straps and these gigantic 16 penny nails. All right, to those of y'all that do have experience in construction, I'm seeing conf some conflicting stuff online here. My plan specifically state to tie all door and window headers to the jack studs with a strap. It doesn't say anything about top plate or any other stud. Jack stud and headers, all it says. So I'm seeing online people saying, no, the headers gotta go all the way to the top plates. It's gotta go all over the place. It's too late to call my inspector, it's the weekend. So I'm curious to see what y'all have to say about that. Because according to the plans, this is exactly right. So let me know what you uh, what you think. I also read online from a lot of forums that you only put the straps on the interior, not the exterior. So I'm gonna wait to do the exterior until I hear from some of y'all. All right, well here we are enjoying our bedroom window view. <laughs> so beautiful, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. All right, well, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Uh, yes, it's another one wall day. I'm glad she was here to see that it ain't just as quick as it looks on TV. It took quite a while to build out all this header and get everything figured out, but it was just like the other wall. Now I know measurements, have a good general idea of the, of the flow of things, and it should go quicker and quicker as we move on down. We've only got one more normal size wall, the eight footers here, before we have to go into a half wall, half eight foot to 12, and we start going out into the uh, you know full 12 foot height for the living room. So that's gonna be a little interesting. That will be coming up. Thank y'all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed us trying to figure out how to build our house. We'll take all constructive criticism. If you've got some negative comments, they will get deleted, but constructive criticism, we will gladly take. We are not home builders. We're doing our best to read the plans, codes, and try to figure this thing out. And we would love any help or information that y'all may give us. Anything you wanna say? Oh, let's just keep plugging along. Yeah, let's keep plugging along, as in get my dadgum <laughs> house done, is what she's trying to say. <laughs> All right, well, thank y'all for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. <laughs>